People are using oil to pull these booger looking things out of their noses. And yes, even Jennifer Lopez is a proponent of shoving olive oil on her skin. But what exactly is oil pulling? Not that oil pulling. Some people have actually lost their teeth because they swish oil around their mouth and they don't brush or floss. And that, and all of the issues that come along with it, as well as the potential benefits from Ayurvedic medicine are for another video. But when it comes to oil pulling on the skin, people are literally using oils, both skincare oils and then like cooking oils, to try to get gunk out of their pores. These boogers or these worm looking things are actually called sebaceous filaments. And for some people, they're able to get blackheads out. But let's talk about what oil pulling is, if it's worth your time, and does it work or not? Most methods of this require you to literally rub oil into your face for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, or even 30 minutes. And guess what? That's what you did. Okay, let's do this. This is in the name of science. 30 minutes on the clock. And this is what my nose was looking like before. For the first minute and a half of this, I just kept thinking, Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Lopez. By the second minute, I was bored. It took about three and a half minutes to get my first little gritty piece. And by five minutes, I actually had like quite a few chunks floating around. I basically just gave myself a facial massage for the next 15 minutes. But around 17 minutes in is when things really started to lift. I felt like I was exfoliating my face. I actually got kind of pissed off because I realized I could have been watching a YouTube video or listening to a podcast, but my hands were already greasy at that point and I didn't think of it beforehand. So at this point, it just felt like I was exfoliating my skin with my own grits. And by like 25 minutes, I was just tired and my face was red it wasn't stinging but like it kind of hurt because normally when you're doing like a facial massage you're able to incorporate other products and use different techniques but I was just rubbing oil and like exfoliating my own face with my little gritty pieces you see um there's obviously olive oil do you see all of those little gritties so when I look at the before and after images, I mean, yes, it worked, but it took a long time. Like I would say minimum 10 to 15 minutes to really get to the good part. And then it didn't work that well. <laughs> like, look, I still have, you know, a couple areas that I didn't rub as hard and I still have sebaceous filaments in my skin. I'm going to stick to chemical exfoliants. But anyways, back to the video. We also have to understand what this is supposed to help with because the claims are insane. Helps with acne, gets rid of blemishes, it decreases wrinkles. It removes bacteria and dead skin cells from your face. It's exfoliating. Since when is an oil exfoliating? It's moisturizing. It's oil. So technically, no, it's not. It's science. In chemistry, like dissolves like. That's why when I mix a bunch of oils together, they are homogenous. They basically flow together. But if I try to mix oils and water or balsamic vinegar and water or anything else, they don't mix very well. And the same thing happens in our skin. You see, our skin naturally has oils. We have what's called an acid mantle. Some people call it a moisture barrier. And it's not technically a layer of the skin, but it's a layer of oils that our skin secretes that sits on top of our skin if it's working well wonderfully. If you can think of your skin kind of like a castle, you know, the actual walls of the castle are your outer skin cells, but around those castle walls is a moat. That moat is that first layer of protection that keeps invaders out of the castle. And it's what keeps invaders out of your skin. If you put your fingers on your forehead or on your nose or cheeks, you kind of feel like this oily slick layer, especially at the end of the day. That right there is basically your skin's natural oils, creating this acid mantle that helps waterproof your skin it protects your skin, but it also transports really important nutrients like omega fatty acids and antioxidants. And yeah, it's literally oil that your skin makes. Now we have to understand how the skin makes this oil because it happens deep down inside of the pores in this little factory that we can call the sebaceous gland. When you think of the sebaceous, think of the word sebum. Aha! That's the name of your skin oil. 
This oil is what lubricates our skin. It's a natural part of our skin and it is important. But as we know, for some people, we get way too much of it. Now here's the problem. If sebum over here in his oil gland gets created and he decides he wants to go up to the acid mantle and you know, do his job and visit the world, he's gotta climb up the hair in order to do that. If you look really closely at your skin anywhere on your body, except for the palms of your hands, soles of your feet and your mucous membranes, like the inside of your mouth or nose, you notice that there's hairs everywhere. Yeah, literally even on the inside of your ears. And all of those hairs are lubricated by sebum. But what happens if sebum can't climb up the hair, can't get to the surface and escape? Well, he can get clogged up in there. Now, if there's bacteria involved, it can become an acne pimple. But if that acne bacteria isn't all that present, that oil, that sebum might just sit in there and hang out. And if he starts to dry up, he becomes a gold little nugget. That's right, he can become a plug. If you look really closely at your nose, specifically the areas that are most oily, kind of like on the bridge, on the side, or even areas on your chest or your shoulders, you might notice that you have these dots and they look like blackheads, but they're not blackheads. And when you squeeze on them, like these little amber boogers or these weird kind of amoebas or parasites come out. They're not an amoeba, they're not a parasite. It's literally a little golden nugget that used to be named sebum. And this is what's called a sebaceous filament. It's basically a clog or a plug that just chills in your pores. But yes, some people can see them and some people want to get them out. Well, there are many ways to get them out, like squeezing, which can be irritating. There are acids that we're gonna talk about later. Or oil pulling. Yeah, remember that these plugs are literally made of sebum that kind of got dried and crustied. So if we introduce oil to the skin and like dissolves like, potentially the oil we put on the skin can break down and kind of loosen up those little clogs and get them out. Guess what? It does. And that is why people have been rubbing their skin with oil for five, 10, 30 minutes to get these clogs out. The way to do it is basically take your oil of choice and rub it on your face and you just keep rubbing. But again, for some people, this is a really lengthy process. Also, you don't wanna use an oil that's gonna cause your skin to break out more. If you are oily, you might not wanna use this method at all. But then here's the thing, once you get the clog out, what prevents it from coming back? There's nothing in oil pulling that prevents that sebum, that gunk from basically building up there again and getting stuck and you having to redo this process, you know, and rub until your arms fall off. I hope you're not rubbing your face until your arms fall off. But yes, for some people who have the right skin, large enough pores and sebaceous filaments inside of them, it literally looks like these sebaceous filaments are jumping out of their noses, out of their pores, out of their clogged skin. And it is really satisfying to look at if you like watching people rub their face with oil and produce what look like tiny amber boogers. <laughs> now this is different than oil cleansing. Oil cleansing is an act of cleaning the skin with oil, like to remove waterproof makeup or sunscreen. However, you usually oil cleanse as part of a double cleanse method where you're using another cleanser afterwards. With oil pulling, people don't really talk about the follow-up because you don't necessarily want to go to bed with a bunch of oil on your face, right? I hope not. I mean, if you're into that, then fine. But again, this is why it's probably not a good idea for people who have oily skin to begin with. You might be using an oil that doesn't work for your skin, worse, that gets into your pores or clogs them. Or if you are acne prone and you're rubbing at your face like this, you could actually irritate take the acne and cause more circulation, meaning blood flow, which brings more inflammatory immune cells, meaning inflammation. And that acne could look even more red and even worse. And that's what happened to me. You see, I rubbed my face for 30 minutes and um, well, it didn't get rid of my acne. It just irritated my skin. And then I broke out more the next day. And then I broke out more later on that week. Fun, fun, we're having fun. I, we like this, yay. It's a good idea, they said. Try the thing that TikTok did. It's the internet, it must be right. When it comes to what oils to use, uh, if you ask Jennifer Lopez, she'll say olive oil. Remember, olive oil and sunscreen were the secret to her glowing skin for like 40 years, but then she launched a skincare line and now that's the secret to her skin. Oh yeah. Now, if you are going to try oil pulling, be prepared to rub your skin for like three to five minutes. Uh, be gentle. My oil of choice would be like a skincare oil, such as this one from Trader Joe's. This is jojoba oil. And it's not technically an oil, it's a waxy acid, but it's basically the same thing. And it actually mimics sebum, what our skin naturally produces. So this is inexpensive, it's fragrance-free, it's non-irritating. Trader Joe's, he's trading all the Joe's, and I approve of this one. But this is a great option, even as a skincare oil, if you want something basic 
basic that works. A lot of other oils that people use in products are things like sweet almond oil, or there's even marula oil. Remember the one that Drunk Elephant used to charge $70 for, and then The Ordinary went and found the exact same manufacturer and sold it for the base price of like 10 bucks? Oh yeah, that stuff works. But the question is, does oil pulling work? Technically, as based on anecdotal evidence that we can see on the interwebs and in people's noses, as well as the science, yeah, oil pulling, when applied to the skin, it can work, it can help. But just because it can help or can work, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good idea. You see, from my perspective as a medical esthetician, who does have my own sebaceous filaments and has struggled with acne for most of my life, this isn't going to be a fit for my skin that tends to be on the more oily side. But even for people who have dry skin, while it might help to add a layer of oil, it's not actually going to hydrate the skin. Remember that water-based products are different than oil-based products. That's why they don't mix, because like dissolves like, and one of these does not belong. But water is hydrating. Oils technically do not hydrate. All they do is lock in hydration. So if you're dry, you're gonna wanna use a water-based product first and then use an oil to seal it in at the end of your routine. We actually have a full video that explains that if you want to understand the difference between hydrating and moisturizing and which one's right for you. I'll leave it right there. Oh look, it's next to the subscribe button. Oh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> But while oil pulling works, it is not necessarily the most effective. There are brands like Mixoon. They have a bean essence that's really fun. A lot of people have been using this bean essence to pull these booger-like looking things out of their skin. And then there are even exfoliating products like the Yoglo from Wishful Skin or the Haru Haru Wonder that basically has cellulose, basically plant fiber inside of the product, and it kind of balls up on itself. Now when the product balls up on itself, it can exfoliate the skin and yeah, it can kind of get into and pull out some black blackheads or sebaceous filaments that are at the top of your skin, those really eager to go pores. But again, this isn't necessarily the most effective, and just because you used an oil on your face to remove the clog doesn't prevent it from coming back. Remember, sebum here, a <gasps> friendly skin oil, is constantly being made. So the next day there's going to be more, and if he can't escape, the same thing's gonna happen all over again. And what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I think that's an Albert Einstein quote. I think, it, was it a life coach? Was it a doctor? Someone, was a teacher? Someone told that to me. It's legit. I should probably change my habits in my morning routine, but that's a story for a different day. <laughs> So here's the secret of what to do instead. Whether or not you oil pull, you can use oils, you can use jojoba, you can use the Mixoon Bean Essence, or you could just use a good cleanser like the Dermalogica Oil to Foam Cleanser that does this in one step in one minute instead of 30, like I yeah. failed at. But after you cleanse, you want to do something to your skin to prevent the sebaceous filaments from coming back. And that's where there are three key ingredients that you need to know that as a medical SD, these are always in my toolkit. BHAs, retinoids, and niacinamide. BHAs are otherwise known as salicylic acid. They actually come from the willow bark, the wintergreen tree, or the willow tree. They're related to aspirin. And a long time ago, people saw bears chewing on willow trees when the bears were injured, and that's how they realized that this had pain-relieving properties. And guess what? Similar active ingredient is oil-soluble, so it can get into the pore. It's antibacterial, meaning it can kill acne if you have it, and it helps to actually remove and dissolve the sebaceous filaments or those oil clogs inside of the skin. BHAs are one of the best things you can do if you have sebaceous filaments and if you have these clogs. And the good news is that because of the way these work, they actually help to go into the pore, break down the sebaceous filament, get rid of them, and then keep them gone over time. Now, retinoids are also a great option. Yes, they work for wrinkles and hyperpigmentation and for scars on the skin, but they can also help if you do have enlarged pores that are really prone to getting these sebaceous filaments in them. Retinoids go deep in your skin, and they stimulate your body to create more new skin cells from the bottom up. They can also stimulate elastin and collagen. But if you're making more skin and that skin is healthier and those pores are tighter because your skin is rebuilding itself from the bottom up, you can bet that you're less likely to experience sebaceous filaments. Now, you might get redness and peeling and irritation from retinoids, especially if you're using the prescription stuff just right off the bat with no practice, but that's why we literally have a YouTube video on your guide to starting a retinoid without the irritation. So buyer beware. 
And niacinamide. Niacinamide is vitamin B3, and this is a fantastic option to help regulate oil production in the skin. Remember, our friend <gasps> sebum, sometimes he can be overactive and sometimes he can be underactive. But if he gets clogged, it's a problem. So while BHAs and retinoids are best to help with that clog, niacinamide can help lessen the appearance of pores on the skin, but niacinamide actually goes into that pore and helps to regulate how much oil your skin produces. As a bonus, it can also help to stop the spread of pigment. So if you're someone who's prone to like splotchy skin, niacinamide can be a great option. And these are the three ingredients you actually want to look for to get rid of sebaceous filaments, because if you get rid of the sebaceous filaments, then you won't have to oil pull. Now, if you like rubbing your face with oil for half an hour, go for it. Be my guest, be my guest, put my oil to the test. Also be my guest to subscribe and stick around for more videos or watch this one where we talk about Jennifer Lopez's love for olive oil. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.